This piece is called the inoculation communication for a reason that will be evident to you by time we reach the end of this video segment. You may have come across individuals with opinions that seem unmovable, who are impenetrable, and who hold on to those opinions irrationally, meaning that nothing you say that makes sense or is based upon accepted fact seems to make a difference to them. You may have come across such individuals in personal communications or through social media, or perhaps you've even seen such individuals speaking in the news media. This piece is going to illuminate and deconstruct their impenetrability. I'll be working from notes, so you'll be seeing me look away from time to time. There's a fair amount to cover here, so I'm not relying upon my memory to make sure that I cover all points. So, in conversation with such individuals, you may notice that they're much more interested in talking and persuading you to their point of view than they are in listening to you and allowing the possibility that you may sway them more or less to your point of view. Such individuals want to influence but not to be influenced. I imagine that's already rung a bell with you. Such individuals want to inoculate you into their point of view and to prevent you from inoculating them into yours. Such individuals are operating essentially without intelligence. That is to say they're operating on the basis of memory, of what they think they know, and with a certain pride in what they think they know and a certain disparagement of everyone else's opinion to the point where they don't really listen and take in what you say, which is actually a requirement for any kind of real conversation rather than a one-sided diatribe. Such individuals are afraid of change. They want to keep things the way they've been or even cause a regression to the way they used to be. Such individuals believe that that constitutes safety for them. So relying upon their memory and their ready answers for everything, impenetrable to any kind of interaction, are basically trying to keep their own safety while impinging on or penetrating the safety of others and they do so by enforcing their own memories on others, but they are impenetrable to new things coming in, and they are largely bereft of imagination or foresight. That might have rung another bell for you. So such individuals are afraid of change, and they are non-adaptive. Another term for this is authoritarian, and I have to clarify that term because a lot of people think that authoritarian means anything having to do with an individual who asserts authority. That's not authoritarian. Authoritarian is like vegetarian. A vegetarian eats vegetables and an authoritarian consumes authority. In this case, the authority of people that they have accepted as their authority and they listen to such persons and won't listen with any depth to anyone who isn't their pre-accepted authority. They are consuming and riding on the authority of others in order to give themselves authority. So their authority depends upon the authority of others. Such individuals are then inauthentic. They are not the authority originating an act of intelligence. Instead, they're merely quoting and riding on the authority of some others. 
so they don't listen. And that's the nature of an authoritarian. An authoritarian doesn't listen, they merely spout. Such individuals, then, are oriented towards what are called dominance hierarchy. Hierarchy is a set of relationships, and a dominance hierarchy is one in which you have a top-down power structure in which the lower down get their authority from those higher up, kind of like a child on the playground who bosses other kids around based on what his daddy told him. So such individuals use denial quite a bit in their arguments, even denying things that are accepted fact by saying they're not true. The term fake news applies here, largely because it's a blanket statement that seeks to discredit sources of information rather than particular items of information. It's a smear. Now, I'm going to illuminate now the intended strategy of such individuals, and then I'll give examples. So, first strategy, and then the tactics that they use. Get ready for your bell to be rung a few times here. The first strategy I'll name is to blunt the intelligence of the other side. That means that they don't want other people to exercise their intelligence. They just want people to go along. The next is to blunt the will of the other side. That means that they want to, to cut other people off at the knees, regardless of merit, so that they can have their own way. So they want to blunt any kind of individual or coordinated action that would interfere with their own agenda. Just on principle, they want to blunt the will of others. Next, they want to show people who's boss. In other words, they want to take the authority position. Next, they want to make others aware of the difference of power between themselves, those others, and the people in power whom the authoritarian takes to be the authority and wants everyone else to accept as the authority. So they emphasize through actions and manipulations, the difference of power in order to make those not on their side feel disempowered. That goes along with blunting the will, but this is making people aware of a sense of difference in who has the power. Such individuals want to create discord among others. In other words, they want to prevent any kind of unified or coordinated action by fragmenting those who would otherwise act together. Generally, they do so through actions and communications, and I'll get more into that when we get to the section on tactics. Next, they want to misdirect the attention of people on the other side. They want to change the subject. They want to switch who's considered to be right or the authority misdirecting attention. They want to undermine the memory of the other side. They want the other side to feel like their own memory is untrustworthy. They want to induce fear in the other side by invoking negative imaginary scenarios or situations. Imaginary negative situations. They want to project and in something into the imagination of others that will shake them up about their own position. They want to dull the truth sense of people on the other side. In other words, they want to call their own intelligence, that is, of people on the other side, into question. They want to make them doubt their own sense of what is true. This is a way of opening the way to inoculating them that is the other side, into the points of view of the authority, authoritarians themselves and those whom they consider authority. So they want to weaken people's truth sense so that they can be more easily persuaded. 
They want to break up the integrity of the other side. This goes along with creating discord. They want to make it more difficult for others to cooperate in a unified effort or in unified coordinated actions. They also want to get people to be shaken so that they don't have firmness of resolve. This is breaking up their integrity. And finally, such individuals want to base their own lesser or smaller or faulty integrity on conformity and control rather than upon intelligence. Their sense of power or integrity depends upon people conforming and being controllable. So this whole array of strategies is a way of busting up the other side so that those on the other side can be controlled. Now let's go to tactics. I'm just going to list tactics and then I'll link those with the overall strategies I've named earlier. So, tactics. Lying, mischaracterization of others, that means attributing things to others that are not true of the others for the sake of the effect it would have in undermining the others. That includes smears. It includes presentations in a way that show disapproval or cast disparagement on others or on their motivations. This is the tactic. Disinformation is another that's putting out so-called information or points of view that are false but serve their agenda. Name calling, simple things, just uh, calling a person to say, oh, a good one is to uh, use the term socialist, for example, because socialist or communist or anarchist or terms along those lines that have a negative cast to them don't require any kind of backup justification. Just the calling of the name is sufficient to have an effect. And they do so then, they use name calling exactly for that purpose, to weaken others without having to justify it. It's called dirty fighting. Baseless claims. Now this would be for their own point, uh, their own uh, self-representation. That is, they would make themselves look better than they actually are, or take negatives and try to cast them as positives to make themselves look better. Another tactic is instilling conflicting beliefs and committing offensive actions. That is, instilling conflicting beliefs means that in the field of their opposition, dividing the opposition into subgroups, and each of those groups are seeking to undermine by promoting certain beliefs that go counter to the interests or the beliefs of that group. And committing offensive actions means doing things that are felt to be wrong or inappropriate, but doing it so much and so consistently that it weakens or overcomes or overwhelms the resolve of the opposite side. Now I've made reference to fake news now, fake news, if you want to know, if a person uses the term fake news, it's because fake news is in their mindset, generally as not only a part of their vocabulary, but also as a way of their acting. So fake news has prominence in their point of view. People who aren't engaged in fake news don't use the term fake news generally. They're not inclined to do so unless or until those who are fake, who are dishonest, who are employing all these undermining tactics, start using the term. Then it gets into the public conversation and then those who are intelligent will start calling fake news fake news rather than calling legitimate news fake news. 
I think I've probably rung some bells here already. But let's go back to the strategy, blunting the intelligence of the opposite side. So repeatedly lying to someone gets them more and more to doubt their own point of view simply by the repetition of influence and the tendency of what is repeated to go into memory. Whatever goes into memory starts shaping actions. Mischaracterizations and smears likewise blunt the intelligence of the other side because they point to a situation or a condition which differs from a person's direct experience. So again, if they're honest and they come in contact with another point of view, they check it out. They look at the other point of view and they check themselves to see whether or not the other point of view holds good against their own. And that again weakens or blunts the intelligence because it wastes their attention. It misdirects their energies, at least temporarily. Likewise, name-calling, likewise, baseless claims. All of these add noise to the intelligence of the person hearing them, and that noise blunts their intelligence, at least temporarily. Blunting the will of the other side. Again, that goes back to influencing their memory or point of view. As soon as they have a scattering of attention, it also scatters their intention, because intention and attention go together. Okay, again, blunting the will uh, occurs by instilling beliefs, or even multiple conflicting beliefs that scatter attention and weaken intention by going into memory and then affecting what people imagine is so. Here's one to show, in this case, let's say the American citizenry, but it happens in other countries, to show them who's boss. We've seen that in the current administration in the United States. They're doing it by, thing, uh, by means of things like defunding Planned Parenthood, threatening to cut Social Security and Medicare, or actually doing such things, withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accords, incarcerating legal asylum-seeking immigrants and separating children from their parents. These are all examples of showing the American citizenry who's boss. Basically by victimizing them, they show them who's boss. That can lead to disheartenment and a weakening of the sense of resolve. Other examples of showing them who's boss, oh, say, the farce of an impeachment process in which the Republicans showed the Democrats who's boss by blocking witnesses and evidence. That also ties in with making people aware of the difference of power between themselves and those in power. You can see how closely related that is to showing them who's boss. Creating discord in the population. This is also known as divide and conquer. There are many ways in which people with differing opinions in certain areas share the same opinions in others and would unify together for certain purposes. So this is how divide and conquer works. You pit people against each other by getting them to believe things about each other that would prompt them to become guarded about each other and therefore reduce their ability to cooperate. In other words, undermining trust. Misdirecting the attention of the other side comes by disinformation, by changing the subject, such as saying how great the economy is under Trump without acknowledging that most of the money is going to those at the very top of the economic spectrum. So that's a form of disinformation. Name-calling. Well, 
uh, calling Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and those who cooperate with her the squad, which originally started out as a pejorative term coined by Nancy Pelosi, who is an establishment Democrat, not progressive enough to handle the situations, the crises that are emerging and facing all of humanity. And that was a way of reducing the status of those smeared with the name. Same thing with the term democratic socialist, because socialism failed basically because it fell into the hands of people like Trump and McConnell. That's why it failed. People then mischaracterized the entire value system rather than recognizing that it was undermined by people very much like the authoritarian types that I've been discussing. So name calling is a quick way of creating discord and misdirecting attention and also undermining the memory because people remember the name that was used to smear them and if it's made prominent they may not also remember that the behaviors of the persons who are being smeared are completely out of context with the names with which they've been smeared. Inducing fear by invoking negative imaginary scenarios. This is like saying the Democrats will crash the economy. It's an imaginary scenario. It's baseless. But it's a way of misdirecting the imagination of people to dull the truth sense of the other side. There's lying, mischaracterizations, name-calling, baseless claims, conflicting beliefs, and fake news. So you see all of those dull the truth sense. People are especially vulnerable to having their truth sense dulled because of the pervasiveness of fiction in the entertainment media. See, when a person is actually saying or doing something in life, there's a depth to the experience of their saying or doing that. It resonates. Whereas if you're looking at fiction where you have an actor, they may be portraying the outward appearance, but unless they are a superlative actor, they don't communicate the feeling of depth that actually arouses the recognition of something as being authentic, which I call the truth sense. Truth sense, recognizing authenticity where it's authentic actually. That's the truth sense. Truth sense has been dulled because people have gotten used to suspending their disbelief by watching too much fiction and engaging in too little factual communication. So all of these actions are strategically intended to break up the integrity of the other side. Those actions are laced with dishonesty and reinforced by a kind of irrational impenetrability on the part of the people using these tactics. These people then are themselves conformists. They are deliberately giving away control to their chosen authorities because they themselves feel inherently disempowered anyway and so they feed off the authority of others in order to get back some sense of empowerment which they then use to attempt to dominate others. So what I've done here is giving you an overview not just of the tactics but the intended strategies which I'll now restate to you to blunt the intelligence of the other side, to blunt the will of the other side, to show people who's boss, to make people aware of the differences of the amount of power that people have versus others, the very recognition of the power imbalance is an additional communication to a person that weakens them in addition to the actual difference of power. The belief that there's a difference in power weakens a person. To create discord, to misdirect attention, to undermine the memory of people 
or to undermine their trust in their own memory. To induce fear by invoking imaginary situations. Invoking means calling into existence imaginary situations. The imagining of things that people don't want to have happen and attributing those to persons to whom those imaginings are, are completely inapplicable. So this is a mischaracterization. To dull the truth sense of the other side. To break up the integrity of the other side. And to base their own lesser or smaller or faulty integrity upon conformity and control. You know what they say, power in numbers, also known as the herd instinct. So this is what they use to undermine people whose integrity is based upon intelligence and creativity versus conformity and control. So the people who employ these tactics in service of those strategies are doing so in order to make the other side vulnerable while keeping themselves invulnerable. You may have observed this approach in the news media and in trolling in the social media. Trolling being where people come into a group and introduce attitudes and viewpoints which undermine the integrity of the group rather than increasing integrity. Now how do you get at such people? First thing is just to recognize their strategy and to be inoculated against it. That very act of inoculation keeps your creative resources available to you because your integrity stays intact or even gets magnified by recognizing what the others are up to. Then you can't persuade such people by dealing with the facts, but what you may be able to do is to undermine their strategy by naming it to them. Oh, I see, you're name calling. Oh, I see, you're calling this fake news. Well, it seems to me that you're calling it fake news is itself fake news. Oh, you're just trying to generate fear here. Then they may come back with facts and whatever they do, you just recognize their strategy and name it back to them. That will go straight into them because they are employing that strategy. So don't defend on the basis of factuality. Instead, pull the pants down in the subway, so to speak, of the strategy that a person is employing or recognize it in one-way public communication, such as in the news media. A fun saying you might employ with such people is, don't believe everything you think you know. Don't believe everything you think you know. And what you do and what you could advise them to do is act on creative imagination. That is something that actually builds benefit. Act on creative imagination, not on fearful imagination, which only shrinks into itself and has no creative power. Act on creative imagination, not on fearful imagination. This goes for people who are also receiving, on the receiving end of these undermining strategies. Act on creative imagination, not on fearful imagination. Talk about what can be created that's beneficial, rather than simply resting on a fearful portrayal and kind of becoming disempowered. And I'm going to say something rather new here, that what I've been describing shows up very much in the political sphere, but it's actually not a political phenomenon. It's a species-wide phenomenon, and it occurs in many domains, not just in politics. It happens in education, it happens in economics, 
It happens in academia. And what it is, is a species phenomenon that occurs when people are under stress. People don't have actual intelligent resources, so they resort to these kinds of illicit, faulty, fabricated strategies. They don't have anything good to create, so they try to undermine what others are doing. And in so doing, they are reverting to a less resourceful, less intelligent, lower integrity state. This happens when people are under overwhelming stress and they're grasping at straws. What this is, given our convergence of crises that we're facing now, and I'm talking about overpopulation, climate destabilization, hunger, uh, political tyranny, these overwhelming conditions lead to a suicide impulse. And that's what we're seeing in these authoritarian types. It is a species suicide impulse. All these things that, are, that they're doing, which you would think are going to make them stronger, wouldn't because they don't have the wherewithal to manage the converging crises. So they would simply be overwhelmed if they had the control position. And not only have they got it wrong themselves, but they want to drag every, everybody along with them into their point of view and thereby drag everybody down. Even though they themselves have it wrong, they want everybody to come into their camp. Given the convergence of crises, this has in effect a suicide tendency. It is a suicide impulse, a racial suicide impulse that I've been describing all along here. Such people, because they don't have the creative resources, whether it is because they never developed them, because they're not intelligent enough to develop or use them, or because they've been disempowered either by upbringing under unhealthy authoritarian dominance, dominance hierarchy. They feel disempowered, and because they're disempowered, they are afraid, and because they're afraid, they want someone more powerful than they to take control and keep control. And then they support such people very much the way sports enthusiasts cheer on and support their favorite sports team. They can't do it themselves, so they cheer on those with whom they've aligned in order to get a sense of power the way sports fans vicariously take a sense of power from the victories of their teams. So, if you're among those who are on the creative, progressive side of things, you've been inoculated into understanding against the strategy of others who are authoritarian and are operating on suicide impulse. If you're one of those who are operating unintelligently on suicide impulse, you've had your bell rung plenty. You've had your number called and it's up to you to exercise your intelligence and to decide whether or not you're going to continue along the way you've been going, which is in the direction of species suicide, or whether you're going to turn it around and start finding ways to be constructive and to support those who are being constructive. This has been an inoculation communication. I'm Lawrence Gold.